G'day guys, I'm Matt Brand, <laughs> and this is the 2021 Genesis G80. <laughs> now, a couple of weeks ago, I was in the all new Genesis GV80, which is the flagship luxury SUV from Genesis, and now I'm in the super luxurious sedan version of pretty much that car. And just like the GV80, this car is nuts. Not only is it stunning to look at, again, the interior is beautiful as well. It also drives like the most classic, beautiful land yacht you've ever seen. And did I mention you can pick this up? <laughs> you can pick this up for less than 100 thousand Australian dollars. Yes, that is a lot of money, but no, it's not a lot of money when you put this in comparison to competitors. There is so much to unpack here, so we better just get into it. Starting at the front, and first look at the ginormous, enormous, gigantic Crest Grill. It's, it is just, it's the size of my apartment, but actually I love it. I think it suits the character of this car so well. I know a lot of people hate big grills because they're scared of change, I like it, especially the way it glints kind of in the sunlight. It is like wrapped in chrome. <laughs> it can be quite blinding from the outside, but it looks like a luxury watch. It's, it's just that good. Flanking the grill are the double line headlights, which are a staple of the Genesis brand now and keep it that way, Genesis, because it is stunning. And even though they're supposed to apparently emulate the wings of the crest in marketing mumbo jumbo, Kind, I can kind of see it. Of course, the headlights are more than just beautiful. The daytime running lights are stunning, of course, being that double LED. They also act as the turning signal indicators, but more importantly, they are extremely functional. You have a quad LED setup. They are super bright, low beam, and especially high beam. It's like blinding, which is great for country roads. This car is a perfect Grand Tourer. And then apart from the headlights and the grill, not much else is going on, and that's a good thing because they are the centerpiece. Absolutely, they're huge. And the front is just, it's such a complete look, in my opinion. Certainly the most striking car I have seen in a very long time. Moving on to the side, and let's address these awesome wheels. My God, if you can option these on your G80, option them. They are so striking, stunning, beautiful. Yes, they are extremely flashy, but hey, if you're getting one of these cars, you want to be flashy. Man, they're so cool. I cannot get enough of them. Anyway, let's, let's talk about the rest of the side. You do get a pretty coupy looking sedan, which at first I hated that industry trend, but it's grown on me. I think it actually works very well in this placement. You do get chrome down the bottom and around the windows, but that's about it. Oh, but a really nice touch and why it kind of looks like a Bentley is you've got like this B on the side, which is the turning signal indicators and it looks great. It's a really cool look when you turn on the turning signal indicators. It creates like a continuous turning signal across the side with the with the B. It's very cool. Excuse me here while I give it a bit of the, uh, the sauce. Ooh. Beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. And then the rear again is just a very beautiful, elegant look. First of all, the body panels are shaped in such a way that it gives it like a ducktail spoiler almost. Just like the front, the rear lights are double lines. Again, beautiful. I love the way they look at night especially. And of course, when you put on the turning signals, they also have the double line effect. I just love that design language. I think Genesis have made something so unique and simple yet beautiful. And for me, the cherry on top with the rear is that for the exhaust tips, they are shaped just like the Crest grill. They're in that Crest shape. And it's a bit odd, but I, I like it. I like where they've gone with it. Overall, I just cannot get over the way the G80 looks. Just like the GV80, it is beautiful. Oh man, it's such a good looking car. And I cannot tell you how many people have been trying to get a photo of this car, breaking their necks just to see it. Especially with the wheels, which are absurd. They are absurd, but they, they just complete the character. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. What do you love or hate about the way that the Genesis G80 looks? In the comment section, I've left a thread and I've put there what I love and hate about the way the Genesis G80 looks. So go down there, have a look what I have to say and let me know what you guys think. Now I want to move on to the interior, but before we do, we're going to give it a bit of the, uh, the sauce. Oh. <laughs> this is not meant for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I wanna start with the overall look, layout, and feel. Genesis knows that entering into the luxury segment, especially with Australian buyers who are very picky, is tough. And so they have thrown everything and the kitchen sink 
into the interior. First of all, the design is stunning. It is beautiful and, and just elegant. Everywhere that looks like leather is real leather. Everywhere that looks like wood is real open pore wood. And everywhere that looks like aluminium, bar maybe a couple of places, is true aluminium. And let me tell you, having those real materials is so important. I'm driving a BMW 5 Series this week. It costs about 150,000 Australian dollars and the dash is fake leather. So this car here, we'll get onto price at the end, but this car here at 95,000 Australian dollars gets real leather. It just goes to show that you can still get a good value proposition. But anyway, it just feels beautiful in here. And, and to be honest, I've been choosing to drive this more than the 5 Series just because of how comfortable I am in this interior. Then there is ergonomics and practicality. The steering wheel is tilting and telescoping massively and electronically too. And the seats are adjusting 10 ways. This doesn't have the luxury pack with like the 16 way adjusting seats but 10 ways is enough storage is great too you get two cup holders up front underneath this beautifully dampened wooden like facade you get a couple more of course in the doors and the door bins are a generous size the center armrest lined in this beautiful leather and opens up beautifully also has plenty of storage space within it the glove box is a good size as well and then you have a storage place for your phone up front in terms of io you have a cooled wireless charging pad which means that your phone will stay cooler and therefore charge faster you also get two usb ports up front and you get a 12 volt socket within the center armrest so yes ergonomic Economics and practicality, great in this G80. The seats are just extremely comfortable. Again, this is not the luxury pack, which is $15,000 more. So no, you don't get the Nappa leather, you don't need it. This is so good enough, it's not funny. And good enough would be underselling it. In any other car, I'd be like, wow, this is incredible. As I said, you do get loads of support because you have 10 ways of movement and you have lumbar support, which is four ways of movement. The seats have this beautiful perforated leather on them because they are heated and cooled and their design is just gorgeous. By the way, I highly recommend getting the light interior in the G80, it's worth it. And you can get so many different color combinations. It's one of the most customizable interiors on the market. But yeah, the seat's truly awesome. And then there is the steering wheel, and the steering wheel is really, really good. Weirdly, it's different to the GV80. It's actually a little bit thinner, which I kind of wish it was a bit thicker, to be honest. It still has that rugby ball design, and it still looks pretty art deco, and, and I love the look. And of course, it is super comfortable in the hands. When I tell you this is made of really nice soft leather, it's made of really nice soft leather. And the steering wheel itself is extremely functional. On the left hand side, you have your media controls. You also have your phone controls and you have a programmable button. And then on the right hand side, you have your safety system controls and you have your digital instrument cluster control. Quickly talking about safety, this car has some of the best safety systems under the sun. First of all, it comes with pretty much every safety system out there. A big shout out though to the adaptive cruise control, which will take you all the way to a standstill and also the lane keep and lane centering assist. This thing will hook you into the center of the lane and effectively drive itself. Up ahead of you is an eight inch partially digital instrument cluster. On the left hand side, you do have a traditional analog speedometer and a little fuel gauge. And then the other two thirds is a giant screen. On the very right hand side, you do generally have a Tachometer. But when you do put on the turning signal indicators, it does show up as a camera, both the right hand and left hand side, so you can see your blind spots. And then in the center, you can show heaps of different information. It's certainly not the prettiest system out there. All of the German rivals, they do do it better. You can get a digital instrument cluster, but it's really not worth it. It has a bit of a trick up its sleeve that it can go 3D, but it's so not necessary. And also it displays pretty much the same information, just a little bit prettier. Again, it's just not worth the $15,000 price tag that the luxury pack commands. Even though the instrument cluster might not be class leading, this 14.5 inch infotainment display absolutely is. This system here is the sharpest, cleanest, fastest, bestest screen in the business. And let me tell you, this screen was huge in the GV80 and it is just just ginormous in the G80. First of all, it is just so responsive and color accurate. As I said, resolution is so high, it's not funny. And probably best of all, it's just so easy to navigate through. Now you can do that through touch. It is a touch screen, or you do have a little scroll wheel, rotary knob, whatever you want to call it, right in the center console. Now, to be honest, the knob in here is not as good as the knob you get in a BMW. For the first week or so of driving these Genesis, Gen Genesises? G cars, <laughs> the first week of driving these cars around, I kept trying to hit the, by the way, all glass gear selector because they're pretty much the exact same shape and size. But you get used to it really quickly and then it becomes intuitive, easy to use. Of course, it is very functional. You get navigation, digital radio, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay though, neither are wireless. And yeah, it, it's just awesome. Honestly, probably the best in the business. It's that good. Oh, and you do get as standard a 21 speaking lexicon by Harman sound system, which is absurd. 
it sounds so good. Seriously, it's that good. And then you have the air conditioning controls. They are a little digital screen, which to be honest is a little bit gimmicky. I, I always prefer when it's just physical hard buttons because with this, it, it just adds an extra step. Also something to note, if you don't get the luxury pack, you will still get three zone climate control, i.e. you can set the climate control for the rear seats, but you do have to do it from the front. Again, it's not a $15,000 issue. I really don't think you need that pack. Otherwise, it is still really good, but in some cases, it just adds an extra step in menu you just don't need. Talking about the rear seats, you do have the same beautiful leather seats back there. And honestly, it's, it's probably more comfortable than up front. I'm five foot 11. I have plenty of leg room, head room, and toe room. Also, rather annoyingly, from the rear seats, you can move the front passenger seat. So if you've got kids, that might get annoying. And although there isn't really any IO back there, you don't have any USB ports or 12 volt sockets, at least as far as I can see, you do get the world's biggest center armrest, which is like the most opulent piece in this car. It is gigantic, but it just, it just goes to show that this is absolutely a luxury car. Ooh. <laughs> Man, this car is pretty damn good. You also get peasant blockers back there so you can shade your diplomats. Excuse me here while I give it a bit of the uh, sauce. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love, I love luxury sedans. I just love luxury sedans. <laughs> In terms of boot space, you do get 424 liters of boot space, which is plenty, but it's not class leading, just FYI. It's about 100 liters less than a lot of its competitors. Of course, you don't care about any of that. You wanna know how does the G80, <laughs> how does the G80 drive? Oh, drives pretty damn well. Now you can get the G80 with a choice of two engines. You have a two and a half liter, four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, which this car has here, or you also have a twin turbo V6 petrol engine, which this car obviously doesn't have. Now the four cylinder petrol that I'm driving here does have a huge 224 kilowatt of power and 422 Newton meters of torque. Whereas the three and a half liter V6 twin turbo, that doesn't actually have that much more power. It has 279 kilowatt of power and 530 Newton meters of torque. So yes, yeah, more, but honestly, like not that much. However, I would absolutely get the V6. The zero to 100 or zero to 62 miles an hour on this four cylinder, ooh. Well, it's pretty good. It's around seven seconds, which is quick, but it's not fast. On the V6, it's around about six seconds. So again, it's faster, but not hugely. But I would still get the V6. You see, power is sent through a buttery smooth eight-speed automatic torque converter transmission. Doesn't matter which petrol engine you get, you get that beautiful, beautiful transmission. The issue is that in the four-cylinder drive is sent exclusively to the rear wheels. In the V6, you get all-wheel drive. And that all-wheel drive system just does feel a lot more planted, especially in a car that's not trying to be sporty. In fact, for a luxury sedan, it, it's not very sporty at all. But that's fine, by the way. <laughs> it's a land yacht. That's what you want. The other issue with not getting the V6 is it means you don't get the adaptive dampers, and you need that. Honestly, for the GV80, that was the best thing about it was just the way it rode. It was so comfortable because it uses a camera, it scans the road and adjust the suspension. This just has passive dampers, which are very well tuned, but the adaptive dampers are just next level. And if you want to know more about the adaptive dampers, do click up somewhere there and you can see my GV80 review. I highly recommend watching that. Trust me, you will see. In terms of the passive dampers though, they are really, really good. Genesis, well, really Hyundai here in Australia, do all of the local tuning and you can tell because it just suits every surface out there. Yes, there is loads of body roll. <laughs> so much body roll, but that is okay. You know, you don't have to make every sedan out there sporty. It doesn't have the five series sportiness in terms of its handling and dynamics and perfect weight distribution. No, it's a giant land yacht. But if you're buying a luxury car, isn't that what you want? Isn't total comfort what you want? Certainly what I would want. I will say if you are trying to get into a G80 and you're looking at the four cylinder, this engine is a perler of an engine. Just like the V6, it is an all new engine and it is just so well refined. But then when you put your foot down, it goes. I'll put the car into sport mode and take a corner. You can't take it too hard, honestly. <laughs> But I will say handling is very precise, if not quite light. Again, it's what you want in a luxury car. I wouldn't want really hard steering, sporty steering in a car that is meant to be a perfect cruiser because that's what you get. Also, big shout out to the sound deadening in here. It is super quiet. As standard, you get acoustic glass, which makes the interior so quiet. And even though you don't get the 
active noise cancellation of that luxury pack, you don't need it. It makes no difference, I promise you. It really makes pretty much nothing. And then in terms of fuel economy, well, that's not the best story out there. In about 33 kilometers of driving, I'm averaging about 12.4 liters per 100 kilometers. You can see around 10 liters, but it's a thirsty engine. Be mindful, I have been flooring the car and driving a bit silly at times, but certainly not all the time. This car doesn't really provoke me to do that. So is the G80 worth it? Well, the G80 starts at 95,000 Australian dollars drive away and that's for this exact spec here with the four cylinder the luxury pack adds another fifteen thousand dollars to the price of this car it is not worth it it is not worth it. what is worth it though is the v6 which comes with that all drive system and adaptive dampers that's worth it and that costs just over 111 thousand Australian dollars. That one is the one to go for. Now, personally, if it were me, I would just go for the GV80. They drive almost identically. The G80 is no sports car. Obviously, the GV80 is no sports car either. You just get a better seating position. You get way more room on the inside. But if you are looking for a luxury sedan, then absolutely I can recommend the G80. It is a great car. Not the best in terms of how it drives, but the overall package, especially for the price, Absolutely. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Click over there and watch my GV80 review. It is effectively this car as a bigger SUV. God, that's a great car. Of course, go down there, hit the subscribe button. I release an awesome new car review like this every single week. And please do like, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week.